All right, let's talk about securing Windows. I always talk about how Windows is fundamentally flawed, and I just kind of want to lay out securing Windows as a lot of the guides online are either way too simple or way too complex depending on where you fall. So I'm going to try and kind of bridge that gap. I'm not going to waste your time saying go here for all these settings. I will show you how to modify mass settings all at once at the start of the video. And then from there, I'll go into the differences between user account control when it's set to notify and not notify. And then also the differences between an admin account and a an user account. Uh, most people, when they set up their Windows 10, they're set up as admin accounts. That means they can run pretty much any executable without typing in a username and password. So you have that. Um, as far as user account control, when you get those prompts, it's kind of like having an admin account, uh, even though you're running as admin. Um, but you need to actually say, yes, go ahead and run this program. I don't really like this way just because many users just get annoyed by the prompt and just always hitting yes or they just hit change account settings and then drag it to never notify so user account control is kind of a mixed bag as uh, a lot of programs still utilize admin privileges which isn't good uh, try not to obviously but uh, there's still people that do that and then uh, i just kind of want to break down overall security of windows Obviously, if you're really security and privacy oriented, you shouldn't be using Windows. You should be using Linux. Uh, heck, you can talk to Edward Snowden. You can look at pretty much any security expert out on the internet, and they're going to tell you don't use Windows. Um, but I, this video is more about mitigating that risk, at least making it to where uh, you'll be more secure, at least not, I wouldn't say private, but at least more private than you would have if you just left everything wide open at its stock settings. So, a lot to unpack. Let's get on the desktop and start configuring. This video is brought to you by UpCloud, the world's fastest cloud servers for the most business critical customers. Their in house developed Max IOPS storage technology allows faster than SSD speeds, delivering up to 100K IOPS read and write. Sign up using the link in the description below to receive a $25 credit. Okay, so this is the stock Windows that you'll see. I haven't done anything. I basically went through the startup and uh, set up a basic user called user. And I did not connect it as a Microsoft account as this is the first thing I wanna talk about. Uh, Microsoft accounts are typically considered a security issue. That is because let's say you have a Hotmail account someone fishes you and gets that password, they can now not only log into your email, but they can log into your computer. You should know up front if you're gonna go with a Microsoft account, you're gonna have some big issues. So under accounts here, you should see uh, just a regular local account. This is just actually name user, local account. Uh, do not sign in with a Microsoft account. By default, Microsoft wants to make you unsecure and basically tie you, tether you to their servers and uh, like I said, if that account gets compromised, you're in for a world of hurt. So number one, no Microsoft account. So number two, in pretty much every single uh, YouTube video about how to secure your Windows systems, as you go through your settings and basically disable like camera usage, uh, what stuff you're sharing, location services, all these things. Now I could walk through this and pad the time for this video uh, and get like a 15 minute video out of this, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go download O and O shut up. This is a really good piece of free anti-spyware tool to disable a lot of the security and privacy concerns. So I'll go ahead and just run this. It'll prompt me using the UAC prompt there. You, you notice that. And I'll go over UAC here in a second. By default, it says, hey, this is all the stuff it's sharing with Microsoft. Now, by default, quite a bit is being shared. There is so much telemetry and just a bunch of garbage. So we don't want that. You just go actions, apply only recommended actions. Some people feel the need to do like recommended or apply all settings. Don't do that as it's going to cause more problems than it'll solve. Like let's say you, you're streaming a game or something like that. It'll lock down your camera so you can't even have access to the camera. So don't enable everything. Just do the recommended settings. So with this, it'll disable telemetry and a bunch of other uh, stuff, which is good. So we'll close this out. We'll close that. We're good. So uh, 
This part kind of covers the privacy and security features of Windows 10. So as far as the settings go, they're, they're actually pretty decent now with oh no, shut up run. It's already modified all those. I'll reboot here in a second. But next I wanted to go into Windows updates. Updates are another kind of gotcha of Windows 10 that most people really don't like. Um, now, I am using the pro version of Windows, and if you're using the home version, you may not have advanced options, which is kind of a bummer for you. But uh, hopefully you are using the pro version, so you got some of these features we're about to go over. Under advanced options, there's a couple things in here. One, don't pause updates. That's usually you know frowned upon. Don't disable Windows updates because we're talking about security. You still need the security updates. But what you don't need is the feature updates. The feature updates are extremely bad. They don't give you any more security. You're just basically their guinea pig. So be sure and set this to 365 because you want to be on the backside. You want to be more on the tried and true feature. So I'm on 1903 right now, which is the most recent, but I know I'm not going to be upgraded for at least several years uh, as far as my Windows goes. So being on the back end of feature updates is good. As far as quality updates for security improvements, determine how many days. Um, since this is a security video, I'll typically do five days. Uh, almost all updates and security updates are released on a Tuesday. I don't know why it's Tuesday, but usually it's a patch Tuesday. And I always deter these or actually delay them about five days. So it usually ends up on like a Sunday later in. So I like to at least put about five days on here to kind of push it back into the weekend. Um, maybe even four days if you're really uh, paranoid. But this is about what you'd want to do for Windows updates as this is the most stable and secure settings I found personally. Other things in here under delivery optimization, obviously make sure this is disabled and you're not sharing through PCs in the actual uh, internet. You don't wanna be using your bandwidth to supply Windows updates to others. Uh, so make sure this is off. That's a, a big thing as well. So next up is gonna be Cortana. This little button down here, you click it and go, hey, uh, <laughs> there is no mic on this computer, but I would normally say something, Cortana would listen, report back to Microsoft. And she also has a lot of kind of snooping capabilities. So for security purposes, Cortana is not good. Now we can't completely rip her out, but we can mitigate her. So if we go GP edit, MSC, we're going to launch into group policy editor, and we're going to change a couple of settings here. So if we just go to all settings right here, you can see allow Cortana right here. And we can just go into that and disable her. So pull up allow Cortana and just put disabled and plus apply. Now this is for Windows search. So with Cortana configured, let's get out of GP edit. That's pretty much one of the only ones I actually enable in here. There's others that you can to like ratchet things down, but I kind of want to actually show those on the GUI without just doing a bunch of group policies here. So we've pretty much limited Cortana a little bit. There's one other thing here, and this is going to be Windows security. You'll see this quite a bit. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of bad recommendations through here. Now, I'm not gonna crap too much on Microsoft or Windows Defender here because it actually does a decent job. Just some of the re recommendations are horrible, such as this one, set up OneDrive for file recovery. Um, you know, most people have gone to security conferences and they've said, hey, the worst virus ever concocted in human his history was Dropbox. And by extension of that, OneDrive is very much a, a Dropbox copy. So having OneDrive and Dropbox, typically a lot of people look at them as good things. I look at them as very high security concerns. Now, some people use them for backups and things like that. And I'm going to go in that in a little bit, which is fine for you residential users out there. But I don't view this as good. I don't like OneDrive. So I just dismiss this. Same thing with account protection. They say, make sure to set up a Microsoft account. This doesn't make you more secure. Windows security, you're drunk, go home. That's no good. But this overall is decent for actual virus and threat protection. You can actually do quick scans here. And honestly, when it comes down to it, I really do like this for a free antivirus. If you're not going to go buy an antivirus, just stick with what you got with Windows. The other ones 
typically introduce ads and they usually cause more problems than they solve. And I've actually done a whole video on free antivirus, but uh, for this video, if you're gonna stick with free stuff, just stay with what's baked into Windows because it's actually gotten really good. Obviously five years ago or more, I would have definitely never recommended uh, Windows antivirus or Windows Defender. The other big thing why we're in here is manage ransomware protection. This is probably the biggest thing that keeps me up at night. This is the thing you have to worry about if you're on a Windows machine. Ransomware scares the hell out of me. There's never going to be a time where I put my head on the pillow and I'm not thinking about ransomware. It's one of those things. So this is actually a really good feature that they've added. Controlled folder access. This basically says, hey, block unfriendly applications from modifying your files, especially if you're using network uh, folders and those types of things, you want this on uh, because you don't want people modifying your files, your home directory, your financials, those types of things should obviously be in here. Go to protected folders, we'll say yes, and then make sure you add all your protected folders. If you got everything in your documents, you don't really have to do anything because it's pretty much already there by default. But if there is another folder you want, um, such as Dropbox, Dropbox is another one that's used. I, I kind of touched on that. But if you're a residential user and you're putting all your information in Dropbox, make sure you put Dropbox as a protected folder as ransomware could get in there and then encrypt all of your Dropbox files. And then you get on another computer and then it spreads to there. It's just a horrible, horrible way, a, a really great delivery method for a virus. But um, just make sure you, you add your cloud drives, network drives, everything into protective folders under ransomware protection. Can't emphasize that enough. And then finally, we've been clicking through this all day about UAC. What is UAC? Does it help? Does it not? Personally, I just find it kind of annoying. So here is our downloads folder. I put um, oh and oh shut up in here. So we'll click this. You get a prompt. Hey, do you want to run this file? And if you say no, it won't run. A lot of people kind of gives this false sense of security in this respect. Uh, by default, pretty much everybody on here is set up as an administrator. Now I've actually created a script a while back. Uh, I was needing to run a certain tool and uh, I needed it to run with elevation. And uh, well, needless to say, I went ahead and just kind of created a little VBS script to run uh, something on startup at an elevated prompt. So let's go ahead, go into it launching a startup program to run as administrator. So this is a kind of a, a wacky thing to do, but just a simple VBS script to run a, a file. So let's go ahead and copy this and we're gonna create a basic script here. We're gonna paste this in here. We're gonna go file, save as, and we're gonna save this as all files and we'll put it in downloads. Why not? O-O-S-U elevated dot V-V-S. So we have, oh no, shut up elevated here under a VBS script. Now, if I click this, you'll see something. So OOSUEXE running from here. We'll go ahead and save this, close it and run it again. So we got the prompt here for, for it actually going and prompting. So we'll go ahead and hit yes, it'll launch it just to test our script. There it is. It launched it as administrator. As you see, there's the elevation, but we're gonna close this so one way to get around a lot of the UAC prompts, like let's say OneDrive here is getting around me not wanting it. <laughs> we'll go ahead and delete that task. So let's demonstrate real fast, bypassing uh, the actual UAC and some of the admin prompts. You can actually create uh, the VPS script like we talked about, and then just put that right here. So let's go OOSU, oh no, shut up. Uh, this doesn't matter. I'm just going to actually create a basic task, start program, programmer script. We're going to select that script we've created, hit next, finish, and it creates that task. Now, it, whether we run it on every bit or not, who cares? But if we just click run, it'll run that script in the background as administrator, launch into here, and there you are. So we're able to bypass a lot of the windows just using the basic VBS script and task scheduler. Um, there's other ways to get around this, honestly, but um, you know, there's a, a good article from Google on how they get around a lot of the UAC and run as administrator problems they, they run into in their update cycle. They utilize task scheduler as well. So uh, 
very important as uh, security vulnerability task scheduler for Microsoft. Microsoft even uses it to like, you know, push OneDrive down your throat. So with that done, I just wanted to show self-elevation, how that works with user account control. Now you can delve in this more. I talked a little bit about an admin account. This is an admin account and I just wanna showcase that. In a business setting, typically you don't want your users installing programs or running executable files. So what you would do is you don't have to worry too much about UAC as this would be at its default setting but you would not be logging in or the user would not be logging in under as administrator. They'd have another account on here that would just simply be a user. User accounts get the UAC prompt, but then it prompts for administrative credentials. So I just wanted to kind of specify just the basics here. Uh, obviously, since I'm an admin, I can just get that UAC prompt, hit yes, and then it'll continue on doing what I want it to do.